Belle Swartzen Gunnis, also known as Lady Bluebeard, was born on November 11, 1859, in Selbu, Norway. She moved to the Port, Indiana in 1902 and is one of the America's most prolific female serial killers. On April 28, 1908, Belle Gunnis' small farm brick house burned to the ground in what seemed to be a tragic accident. Inside the house were the bodies of Belle and her three children, aged one, nine, and five. But what first appeared to be accidental soon became a murder investigation. The body that was assumed to be Belle Gunnis was missing its head, and was also disproportionate to Gunnis' size, and investigators began to doubt whether it was truly her body. Several years before, her husband, Peter Gunnis, had been killed when, according to Bell, a meat grinder had toppled off a shelf and struck him in the head. But when the coroner looked at the body, he allegedly muttered, This is a case of murder. The authorities investigated, but Bell was so convincing in her denial that no charges were ever filed. After her husband's death, it was common knowledge around town that she had taken her handyman, Ray Lamphere, to bed with her on lonely winter nights. Lamphere soon became the head suspect in the arson and murder case. The Laporte Sheriff sent two of his deputies to search through the debris of the house for Bell's head and sent two others to arrest Lamphere. Before Bell's disappearance, she was frequently seen around town accompanied by many different handsome young men who usually arrived by train. In 1908, Ray Lamphere was introduced to a gentleman from South Dakota by the name of Andrew Helgelian, Bell's new husband-to-be. Lamphere protested their marriage and Bell fired him. Lamphere soon began drinking heavily and began showing up at Bell's house frequently. She had him arrested for trespassing and mentioned to the sheriff that she feared he would set fire to her house. After hearing the story, the sheriff had Lamphere locked up and formally charged with the murder of Bell and her children. Lamphere pled not guilty. Andrew Helgelian's brother, Asel Helgelian, showed up in Indiana when he hadn't heard from his brother. He told the sheriff that Andrew had answered an ad placed by Gunnis asking for her husband. In the ad, she asked the man who answered the letter to bring $1,000 with him to help her pay off her mortgage. Bell ended her letter with, My heart beats with wild rapture for you. Come prepared to stay forever. Andrew withdrew his life savings, got on a train, and was never heard from again. When investigators dug up the area surrounding Belle Gunnis' home, 14 bodies were found. Relatives began to appear from all over the region to claim the bodies. All of them spoke of brothers, uncles, and cousins answering Belle's matrimonial ads and traveling hopefully to Laporte with their life savings stuffed in their pockets. The sheriff estimated that Belle had made about $30,000 from her victims. She had drugged them, cut up their bodies, and then buried them. Lamphere was acquitted of the murders, but was convicted of setting fire to the house. He received a sentence of 2 to 21 years in the state penitentiary. He died of tuberculosis in prison, but before his death, he confessed his role in Bell's crimes to his cellmate. He had told him that he was aware of Bell's murderous activities, and he even buried bodies for her. He said that the headless woman that was found in the fire was a female derelict that Bell had found in Chicago. She had poisoned the woman with strychnine and then placed her in bed with the children. After that, she vanished with the money that the men had brought to her. Lamphere was supposed to hear from her after she got away to safety, but he never did. And what happened to Belle Gunnis herself? No one knows. She vanished without a trace in April of 1908 and was never heard from again.